What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Odin Pro. Now I've already done one video on this and that was basically my first impressions video. I didn't have long to mess around with it, only a couple days. But since then I've had this in my possession for around two and a half weeks and it's been my main go-to handheld for native Android gaming and emulation. I've tested a lot of handhelds on the channel, but we don't get many Android handhelds with built-in controls, but this is definitely the best one that I've tested so far. When it comes to performance, build quality, and overall usability, I think they've done an amazing job with this unit. And in this video, I kind of just want to go over what can and can't be done with the Odin Pro. I've also tested out the battery extensively, charge rates and discharge rates, so we'll get a good idea of what kind of battery life you're going to be seeing on the Odin Pro. But before we get started, I'm going to give you a quick refresher in case you're not familiar with the Odin Pro. So as for the CPU, this is using the Snapdragon 845, but they have overclocked the built-in Arduino 630 graphics by a bit. We've got active cooling. The Pro model has 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM, 128GB of internal storage, plus a micro SD card slot, and I've tested a 400GB card in here, no problem at all. It's got a 5.98 inch screen at 1920 by 1080, a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, and this is running Android 10 right now. It's actually a really clean ROM, and the only things installed are some Google apps, and they also have some of their proprietary Odin software built in, which really does help out. Like their own Odin launcher, a gamepad mapper, you can display the FPS on screen, and fan control for the built in cooling system. A couple things I really love about this unit we do have linear triggers back here, or analog triggers. We've also got a mini HDMI port so we can do display out and it'll do 1080p. It looks really good and fills the full screen. It also supports display over USB Type-C, plus they've kept the 3.5mm headphone jack down here. When it comes to the built-in controls, I haven't had any issues with them, but I have seen a few people complaining about the wiggly D-pad. I really didn't even notice it. Uh, while playing it, it doesn't present an issue whatsoever. They might tighten this up on later versions, but it works fine for me, and I've had a really good time with the D-pad and the dual analog sticks on this thing. Round back, we do have two extra buttons that can be mapped from software, and with their built-in mapping software, you can get these built-in controls to work with any game that doesn't support a controller natively on Android, something like Genshin Impact. And it does work out really well for games like that, so you don't need a third-party application installed to get that working. So what I'm going to do now is just connect this to my game capture so we can get a better look at the screen and the operating system. Display out does 1080p and it fills the full screen, unlike some other devices that do HDMI out over USB Type-C and kind of cut off either the sides or the top and bottom. Alright, so like I mentioned, most of this is just going to be video capture. Uh, one of my favorite things about this unit is the HDMI out support. We have that micro HDMI port on the top. And something I actually didn't realize, it does video out of USB Type-C, and that's how I have it running right now. So I've got a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. I can charge this unit and have it plugged in at the same time and just have video out. I think it does a great job outputting that 1080p picture. Looks absolutely amazing on a bigger screen. And right now, as you can see, we're in the basic Android operating system. But with this unit here, we have the Odin Launcher, which comes in very, very handy. Very easy to navigate. We can actually change this background here. Now I've got that same background. You can download whatever you want here. Nice animations. And our layout can be changed. So we can have these smaller tiles. I like the larger tiles. It just makes it a lot easier to navigate. Swiping over from the right hand side, we have our performance setting. So we're in high performance mode right now. We can set this up for a dark theme, light theme, it's really up to you. Swiping from the right hand side, got some more settings here, shows us the CPU temperature. And right now, I actually have the built-in fan on. So if we swipe down from here, we've got a few settings. From the fan, we can go to smart or sport, or we can turn it completely off. Usually I leave it in sport, that way we have that sustained performance. This will not thermal throttle with this fan on, and this 845 can keep its clocks up on the GPU and the CPU. I'm really glad that they did add a fan to this thing. It really does make a difference for sustained performance, so if you're playing a game more than 30 minutes on a regular Android phone with no active cooling, the CPU and GPU start to underclock itself, but with this, the fan on either smart or sport, this can go all day long at its highest clocks without thermal throttling. Another thing I like about this unit is their updater. So it doesn't rely on just regular Android updates. If we go to the updater, this is a totally customized version of Android 10 for the Odin. They have their own updater. So we can check for an update, we can get our version info, 
And when they find bugs and things like that with different launchers, maybe different emulators, they can always hotfix that very easily by throwing an over-the-air update out. And hopefully they also keep up with security patches. But so far, I mean, this thing has been performing really, really well. Definitely one of my favorite Android-powered handhelds. There are a few on the market, but this one takes the cake. Software, performance, and the overall design of the unit itself. Keep in mind, this is the Pro model. They do have a light model with the MediaTek Dimensity chip. This is going to be the best performer with that Snapdragon 845, at least as of making this video. Hopefully, down the road, we do see something with a little more power, like an 870 or maybe even an 888. But for now, with emulation, native Android gaming, and cloud gaming, this has been a really awesome handheld. And I personally think it's definitely worth the price. But one thing you need to keep in mind is, this is using the Snapdragon 845, which is a few generations behind something like the 888 or even the new Gen 1. So when it comes to emulation performance, you're definitely going to feel that in the higher end stuff like PS2, GameCube, Wii, and even 3DS using the Citra emulator. Don't get me wrong, because for what it is, this does perform amazingly well, but don't get your hopes up that you're going to be able to run every PS2 game using Ether SX2 on the Odin Pro. But it does a really good job with emulation. Here we have some Dreamcast using the Redream emulator. I'm at 1080p, and I think we could go a bit higher, but we're kind of locked at 1080p either on the built-in screen or over HDMI. Crazy Taxi 2 running at a constant 60. PSP is another one that performs really well. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSBP. Vulcan backend, 3x resolution, and in my original video, we did test out some harder to run games. They work fine either using Vulcan or OpenGL. The Citra emulator on Android is still kind of in early development, but there are games that will run at full speed. 1x resolution, this does use the OpenGL backend. Performs way better than I thought it would for the Snapdragon 845. Now we're going to move up to GameCube emulation, and I'm using the standalone Dolphin emulator from the official website. This is a development build. There have been some recent updates to Android, and on OpenGL, the 845 does really well with a lot of games, but it doesn't mean you're going to be able to run every single game at full speed. As for Wii emulation, the Odin Pro is definitely holding its own. With this one here, I did swap over to Vulkan because I was getting a few dips with OpenGL, or a few more dips. But one I always like to test is F-Zero GX. It's just a harder one to emulate on ARM and even x86. I've tested it with the OpenGL backend, I've tested it with Vulkan, and the Odin Pro is definitely trying its hardest, but it's just not going to cut it with this game. I've tried all kinds of hacks in the background, and unfortunately I can't get it to run at 60. But one emulator that everybody's talking about on the Odin Pro is Ether SX2, the new PS2 emulator for Android. And with a lot of this stuff, I was surprised at how well it ran. This is actually just a really good emulator. We're using the OpenGL backend. You can swap over to Vulkan if you think it's going to help out. But with these first two games, I have no hacks. This is in safe mode. So we're good to go with Kingdom Hearts 2 and even Gran Turismo 4. This is one I always like to test. And with this emulator, I've just had really good luck with it. So as you can see, the Odin Pro can definitely handle some PS2 games in safe mode, whether you want to use OpenGL or Vulkan, but this doesn't mean it's going to run every PS2 game well in safe mode. When we move up to something like God of War 2, in safe mode, whether we're using OpenGL or the Vulkan backend, it's just not going to run at full speed unless we turn some cycle hacks on in the background, and then we really get some frame skip. So here it is, safe mode, OpenGL, you can see that we're not quite at 60. I also tested this with Vulkan, and it seems to perform just a little worse than OpenGL, at least with this game. But as you can see, we're not at full speed. So with something like this, you will have to turn on some cycle hacks, or just hacks in general in the background. And then we kind of get a choppy experience. But it does feel faster on screen. Now I've played this game so much, you know, on the original PS2 and emulation that I can really tell that there's some skipping going on. But most people might be fine with playing it just like this. And remember, Ether SX2 is a newer PS2 emulator for Android. It's in early development. I suspect that we'll see some better performance out of the 845, but I don't think it's going to be perfect in the end. When it comes to battery life, I was really impressed. We've got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. From zero to fully charged, it'll take about three hours with a quick charger. And in my rundown tests, I had the screen brightness set at 60%. So 1080p YouTube video playback, I got nine hours and 37 minutes out of the battery. PSP emulation, five hours and 12 minutes. 
not bad at all. That was at 3x resolution. And Genshin Impact, which is just really hard on these devices, three hours and nine minutes. So not bad at all. I mean, we're getting anywhere from three hours up to close to 10 hours of battery life out of the Odin Pro. So in the end, I really do like the Odin Pro. And like I mentioned, this is the best Android gaming handheld that we've seen so far. I suspect if this is really successful, we'll see more come to the market with higher end chipsets. But for now, with the Snapdragon 845, the Odin Pro is definitely the way to go if you're looking for an all-in-one emulation slash native Android gaming device with built-in controls. Now you can always go out and buy a phone with something like a Snapdragon 870 or even an 888, add a controller like the Razer Kishi, and still get really good performance out of it. You might already have one of those in your pocket right now, so you can do that really easily. But if you're looking for an all-in-one Android-powered gaming handheld console with built-in controls, cooling fan, dual stereo speakers, and really great battery life, then the Odin Pro is something that I can highly recommend. But remember, it's not the most powerful Android device on the market. Still get great performance like you saw in this video, but there's some stuff that the Pro just can't do. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Pro or even the Lite model, I'll leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.